So, scenario for you. Put your shield on the floor. Like this. So just to clarify, this is bad, but this is okay. I feel like when it comes to Grand Plié, there are three parties of people. The first party is, how dare you even consider changing something? This is the Bible. Never change a thing. Then there's like most other teachers out there, kind of similar to me, where they're like, eh. I really only give grand plies to my students who are on a semi-professional track. We only do them in first and fifth. And then there's me. I don't do grand plie at all. Except for in second, because that's a good stretch and your heels are on the floor. But I've recently started incorporating grand plies back into my bars and my classes. But I'm doing them in a slightly different way, and I'd love to be able to share that with you. I was reading Agrippina Vaganova's book, which actually pretty much is the Bible. I got to the section about plie, and I read something really interesting. Basically, she said, hold on, I don't want to mess this up. Okay. In grand plie, keep the heels on the floor as long as possible. When it becomes impossible to stretch the tendons any longer, lift the heels off the floor softly and gradually, never with a pull. The heels should not be kept off the floor for any length of time. Begin to raise yourself and lower the heels without delay. So I don't know what that means to you, but to me that means you go into your demi plie when you go as far as you can, you let yourself go farther and let the heels come up, and then right as they've come up, you press the heels back down and you come back out of it. So to me, that means that this is wrong. So the way I teach grand plie to my students is we start with a demi plie, we do a couple demi plies just to warm up the ankles. We do an ankle release so that our ankles are nice and loose. I have a video on that. Then we go into our third demi plie and then we relax the ankles, let the heels come up just a bit and then press the heels back down onto the floor. Not only does this not put the pressure on the knees, it has majorly improved almost all of my dancers' plies because when you let that ankle relax and you let the heels come off the ground and then immediately begin pushing them back down, you get a deeper stretch in your Achilles tendon and your soleus and your gastrocnemius. So I'd like to invite you to try this, see how you feel about it. I personally don't feel that if you leave gr traditional grand plies out of your bar that your students are gonna be lacking in anything. Um, when I ask teachers what are the benefits of grand plie, they come up with stuff like um, it gives you a good stretch in the hip, and it stretches out your Achilles, it strengthens your thighs, it strengthens the glutes. There is nothing that grand plie gives you that you can't get somewhere else in a safe manner. Give it a shot, see if you like it, save your knees, and for those of us who maybe want to cling to the traditional stuff a little bit harder, Please also consider that when you line up kids in their underwear when they're nine years old and pick them for their bodies, yeah, they can probably all do grand plies with no problem. But that's not how we do it here, and that's not how we do it anymore. Anyone can sign up for ballet. With these online classes, literally anyone can take ballet even without a teacher. So please start to be a little bit more considerate over the idea that Maybe the same people who invented turnout boxes are not the people that we should be taking medical advice from. Okay, good. Now do it in fourth position. Keep the back straight. Let's add a twist to the lumbar spine. Hey, do we still have those turnout boxes in storage? Uh.